Um, look, the work of the diaspora is obviously crucial, and you know, Greg is something I got you know, through the network of like of people that were able to host people who were coming for abortions whenever I was in university here. And I think that the work of the diaspora always goes hand in hand with the work of people at home. You know, we support each other up and we, we make each other. Uh, the reason we can exist is that we support each other. Um, but, but I would say that like, what Greta was just specifically talking about was trans issues. She, you came back on abortion since International Women's Day, we're not denying that British Solidarity has a great time, but I just think what's really explicit about Irish Solidarity is the fact that it's pro-trans, we're unapologetic for that. So, happily pro-trans up here, I hope you are too. Um, and it's certainly not everybody in Britain. And I'm sorry if I didn't feel anybody leave, but my role here is to come back to the questions. But what was very clear during the field day is that we were getting regular hate mail from the London Irish abortion rights campaign to individuals, um, to groups across Ireland. How dare we include trans women in our movement because they don't know what it's like to have the state interfere in their body, which is obviously ludicrous, and we do not agree with that. So, yeah, I just want to put a line on that. The Irish Sorry, I got deep in there. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, just uh, there's not really a lot that I can come back on. I am in the diaspora. I haven't lived in Ireland for 14 years. I go back all the time for curry specials. <laughs> it's a very special Irish street curry rice and drop. So if you haven't tasted it, please go to China. Oh, we're allowed to go to China Garden? Please go to the Mandarin Palace in Derry. You'll have the best curry special ever. <laughs> Um, but what I can offer at least is that um, whenever the Mauricio Clinic came to Derry, me and McGrady and another person, I can't remember who it was, were sitting in the guild hall and people started doing their rosary at us. I mean, this is in 2012, actually, if we had something similar in Norway, I think we'd gone past that. So although Trump is in, in that kind of reactionary movement, I, I do and I hope that they're like, less confident coming to challenge us because it's so overwhelmingly and so clear that the majority of people, including older people, do support our movement and that's something that we can really celebrate and, and um, but yeah, we, we might have the upper hand I think when it comes to these social issues. Um, yeah, I mean that's, that's basically all I can say because I can't read the rest, so. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mary. Uh, it was, uh, I, when I said at the very beginning you know, that the confusion was such that I didn't know anything for certain, I wasn't about to make any sort of uh, specific uh, uh, promulgations or forecasts or uh, anything like that. I mean, my, that feeling has deep uh, ripened within me, so in the course of the uh, evening, I've been asked a couple of questions, and I'm not sure because I don't know. You know, I, I, I know that means, so what are you going to be speaking for if you don't know? But if I can convey from the depth of my confusion, I think that in itself maybe is the approach of enlightenment. Because, you know, I've given you a couple of talks about, you know, that the, the uh, uh, well, the two of them run together. The, the, the reason why there are, there are many people who follow from the details of Westminster, Starmont, abortion, Gay minds and so on, and the way that that's worked so over uh, uh, recent years, but we could never get equal rights or, or uh, abortion rights through the start. Because we're going to put this structure set up in the Good Friday Agreement made it impossible. Again, the DUP had a, 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 a veto over them. But for the whole storm of fell, and there's no storm up there, the question of meeting the arose, well, we can't even go to storm anymore. Who's in charge here? It's Westminster. So let's start organizing there. The number of LPs did start to begin to uh, organize, particularly on uh, a what we're trying to choose. And what's happened is that they did say something that everybody knows. I mean, it's already been passed into law that a person is going to be decriminalized in the law if Stormont is not restored. On the 21st of October, they've been given up to the 21st of October. By part of the law has already been passed. It's there, it's on the statute book. Uh, uh, a decriminalization of abortion, equal marriage. These laws are on the statute book for Northern Ireland with the provision 
that if the Scotland Assembly is revived in the meantime, they will be returned to Drummond as a Republican administration and will be back uh, anywhere where they can. Now, if you want to see progress on these matters, then you have to hope that Stormont won't be revived until the 22nd uh, of October. And that goes for most of the people who are on progressive side and will be what equal lives, will want to uh, uh, read productive rights. Many of them sort of would be happy passionately against returning any part of any day uh, to Westminster. But now they say, well, hold on until the 22nd. <laughs> well, I think before we do, we do it. Like Sidney Rustin, you know, who said, you're not going to be pure, but not yet. Uh, 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 the, 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 it's also uh, uh, a case that if you look at, because of this sort of setup, the DUP is now objecting to Westminster legislating for Northern Ireland. <laughs> the leader of the DUP, uh, a army foster, has referred to Westminster interfering in our internal affairs. <laughs> That's the unionists. That's the unionists. <laughs> Meanwhile, there goes a ship big to Portis Brewing demanding that Westminster interfere. <laughs> and they say, now work that one. So when I say there's confusion all around, I mean, I haven't I, I, I mentioned the half of it. But let me move on very quickly to this, that you don't know, think about class and the border and all that. Just to be at the end of every meeting in Ireland, you know, about the, 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 the working class who have been able forward. And it's true, of course, that you're only going to solve the national problem in Ireland, so what, on the basis of all, and when you say working class, I'm not talking about the caricature, you know, men don't breathe, sort of, I mean the people in the lower half of society and the people who are members of open groups groups uh, 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 together. You know, they, they, even though, sort of, the class nature of our politics in Ireland as over here, I mean, Northern Ireland as in, in, in Britain, has sort of declined. There's no question about that. Sort of, where the, you know, the, the edge is not as sharp sort of, as, as it used to be. Nevertheless, sort of the number of oppressed people in Dark and South, who are gathering together, as we said earlier, uh, uh, that's greater than at any time in the past. So we have to look, you've got to look for hope where hope is generated. You've got to look for brightness where there is brightness. Now you sort of try to carry that sort of a, 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 on uh, in, in, into the future. Which is why I, I said, you know, when I talk sort of about the raising in favour sort of, of a woman's right to choose, the raising in, fa in favour of uh, uh, equal rights, the raising against sort of the filthy racist of that was revealed sort of in the rugby ring trial uh, in Belfast. I mean, I mean all those things. I talk about the working class. Because as far as I'm concerned, the working class is at the centre of the heart of the hope of the different meetings that are needed really about whatever happened to class politics and the class solution and the global traditional sense in Northern Ireland. One thing, one thing you can say as a sentence is that trade union officialdom does not emerge with any credit. There's a many considerations sort of the white class politics that not come uh, uh, to the fore. But it's a of the, of the reason why sort of that may change or be slow to get the process. Uh, uh, of change in sort of the system. When we started, we're talking about 50 years ago, sort of, uh, that we began to summarize through with them. And we come, and I come from Boxing, and uh, we grew up sort of, and this is not good for me, I had a great time in Arthur, but I'm complaining at all. Well, I'm not complaining, but I'm not complaining personally. Uh, 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 the whole situation. So it was rational to believe, but it was never the whole explanation, of course. It was rational to believe that the reason why we had such appalling housing, appalling overcrowding, in Russell Street and the surrounding streets of the box was on. It was rational to believe that the reason for that was, at least in part, the fact that Protestants were getting the houses and not the Catholics. Therefore, it made sense to have a movement on that, even though it wasn't stated explicitly, that what we needed was the Catholics brought up and, if necessary, the Protestants brought, brought uh, down with it. Now, leave that argument to the same woman. It's, it's, it's an old healthy argument, anyway. But it was rational to believe that and to conduct debates on that basis. Now, in 2019, it is not possible to solve or even address problems of poverty and the effect of Protestant working class areas without also addressing the problems of poverty uh, in Catholic working class areas. You're not going to beat sort of welfare reform at the central row unless you beat it also uh, in the void. You're not going to sort of beat sort of the AA questions are about getting rid of the gig economy sort of thing. You can't win that in one community. There are no solutions left, at least as far as the class is concerned. There are no solutions left. 
that it was a water rebalancing sort of the capital rather than a populist. And therein lies, and I'm slipping in, I can speak for a hope, I promise you, so I have to get the paper at our that have all this to go through the history of the Salvation and Trade Union official and uh, all the rest of it. I could talk for a long time about the paper of the Trade Union movement in relation to uh, the shipyard and all that. Shipyards are very unionized, a solid trade union, 20,000 people, not once, not once, the federal capital will be driven from the shipyard in the trade union movement stand off the individual state, individual group, small groups, all official groups. Again, not what's the trade union movement as a whole stand off straight and say, we're not having this and tell their Protestant members. You know, that's hard. I don't need to beat them over the head with it, but at least to uh, have that as one of the discussions which needed to be had for about 40 past people. That never happened. That never happened. I'll give you a I'll give you another example, which is recorded for me. We mentioned from the Sunday area. One of the strange things about, not strange, but sort of unexpected things about the 13 people, all the other person dating him, 13 people who were killed in Bloody Sunday, and the 13, seven were trade unions. Now that was probably remarkable in a way because their sex that didn't uh, reflect the distribution of the density of trade unionism across the town. Nevertheless, there were seven trade unions. Two days later, on the Tuesday after Bloody Sunday, we go out the first uh, of February, there was a trade union conference of Belfast, which had been organized months in advance of the 4th of the year, Bloody Sunday, but it grew together. For reasons that's too complicated to go into, both the International Federations of Trade Union of, 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 of Trade Unions, and what basically was the Soviet one and the other one, or one was the Western, the Western one. They came together, probably the biggest and most representative sort of, trade union conference ever held, sort of in that. And it certainly was. The reason why you don't know about it is precisely that probably something happened two days earlier that nobody was interested in rightly so or anything else to come uh, out of the arm. However, however, what is remarkable is that throughout that conference, nobody, nobody mentioned Bloody Sunday. Nobody mentioned that seven trade unionists were in the war and out the Gavin Hospital and Terry because they were split the working class. That was the fucking argument. You know, we lose numbers. So I don't know if we take that out of it. They've lied about it ever since. Trade unionists have lied during the last 10 years of presenting a complete lie in their country. And once they emerged, we fought the good fight and all that. And they did not. They dodged the whole thing. That has to be factored into any explanation of the weakness of the traditional working class in Ireland at a, a garden side. But as I say, you know, sir, just as there, you can't have a one community solution that rebalancing the communities in the north. There is any way forward uh, anywhere. And so far, there was the average rate. There was a walk of enough rational even to discuss it now. So there is a solid foundation. Solid foundation for us to argue sort of that the amazing spirit sort of that the show sort of semi spontaneous sort of rising sort of in Ireland over, uh, uh, over, over, over this last five, five years or so. There is sort of good reason for optimism that we might be able, I wouldn't certainly, I wouldn't predict anything great. Is it any reason to stop them? Like, as far as I'm concerned, the UK has had it. You know, the time's up on the UK and they get that. Whatever happens in Ireland, they can stop them from its way. Look, sir, what I say, sir, is that in all the confusion, all the interpenetrating co contradictions that we are faced with, not just in Ireland, but especially perhaps uh, in Ireland, these are, it seems to be, the things we're talking about. There are reasons to be cheerful. There is reasons to be cheerful. And as I say, it's very good. Younger people, uh, the facts are uh, uh, okay, working class Protestants have burst out from the bottom, the bottom sort of, of the EU definitively. And that will be. The, the, the frustrating thing about the norm is that sometimes you're dealing with people who agree with you and get on board the next day, sort of, look for the flag. And that happens to both sides, but especially sort of in relation to uh, the union flag in the north. Can we debate that? Can we debate that? Well, you know, a, we must have been with a better chance of doing it now than we ever had before. As far as I'm concerned, the future is bright, the future is red, and it will be seen on the working class as well.